Hi YouTube, it's Sam with Generation Reptile and today we're going to kind of continue where we left off on one of my, my previous video. I was talking about care requirements for snakes and it's uh, time we do a complete tank change out for this little guy right here. Probably remember him from the last video. This is my MBK Clyde and we're going to go through the steps that we use to set up his enclosure today. So we're going to put him aside. Beautiful little guy. And then we'll get to the video and we'll show you the basics. And it's very simple, easy to manage. These snakes are not hard to care for in any way, shape, or form. So with that, we'll get to starting our video. And begin with this right here is the aquarium we keep them in. Nothing too fancy. This aquarium will not work for his whole life or even half his life. He'll probably get changed out of it, and I would say in about... Four to six months we'll upgrade him to something bigger, but right now, due to his size, we're keeping him in a smaller enclosure for the time being. So with that said, we're going to start off with the basics of setting him up. Number one is the substrate. Uh, and as I said in my previous video, the substrate we use for him is a mixture of cocoa husk and sand. And the cocoa husk I use is the Exoterra brand. I'm not sponsored, none of that, just I personally like it, use it for 99% of my reptiles that we keep. And then on top of that, we also use sand, and we just mix it pretty much, Exoterra, again, for those of you wondering, we, uh, we mix it together about a 50-50 mix, pour that in there, add the decor, you know, it's really simple. So I've already taken time, broken up some of the cocoa husk, started mixing it up. These guys like their humidity uh, in the th about 40 to 60 percent. So that's why we use the cocoa husk. It's great for retaining moisture, keeping that humidity where you want it. So, and with mixing this, you, you just mix it till it's kind of moist, you don't want it damp or dripping, anything like that. So once we get that in there, we're going to go and add in an equal portion of sand. And we're just going to dump it in there. That there looks good. And then we're going to sit here and we're just going to mix it all around. Went a little heavy on the sand, but that's that. And then we'll just go and start adding it into his tank. We'll show. We'll, I'll, I'll actually. I don't have a lot of dust space, so when I'm done putting his aquarium together, I will pull it up and show you everything at the end. So just bear with me for a little bit. Still getting the hang of this, folks. So I just throw it in there, make sure the cocoa husk is broke up real well. Like I said, you, you want it moist, but not damp. And I try to get it, uh, I don't know, I'd say an inch to half an inch deep layer. It, again, it doesn't take a lot. So, spread that out. You know what, I'm just going to move my camera back some and show you guys as we add in all this extras. So, this here is the base of his setup. So, we've got a nice little mixture form. Alright, and how we're going to do this is I'll just start adding stuff and we'll talk about it some. Because there are a few things I'm going to go over with just as I do this. 
So first and foremost, you want him to have two hides. This here is hide number one, just a simple black box. And that's just going to go over here on the slightly warmer side of his aquarium. And we're going to, on the inside, add Exoterra, their little stagnant moss that they sell. I use tons of this stuff. I just, I put this in the hides to help with basically just a little extra spot to, for a humidity bump. It helps with their shedding. So, just get a nice little clump and we're just going to take... Kind of spread it in there some, and I'll set it over here on the inside of his enclosure. And so all that is is just an extra spot for him to go if he needs a little extra humidity. And then we're going to, he has a secondary hide right here. Normally I would not recommend this for snakes due to this hole right here as they grow and expand. It's not uncommon to see snakes get hung up and stuff like that. Granted, as little as he is, I don't really see this ever being much of an issue for him. So, that's fine when they're little like that. Then, we get some decor items that we're going to throw in there. Mainly, um, driftwood pieces. You can find these anywhere and everywhere. And we're just going to set a couple of them in here. At random little spots. Just to give them something to climb over, explore, it does a lot for them. And then we've got some simple little things like little plants we're going to stuff in here. I don't really do live plants with most of my snakes as they more or less just have a tendency to pretty much rip them up from the ground and then they die. And it, it's not worth it, in my opinion. I mean, with a smaller species like him, eh. It'd probably be just fine. It wouldn't be any issues. Then we're going to do this. Just a little nice little bit of foliage. Because these guys do like to climb. And this thing has got a wire support in it. So it will hold his weight pretty well. So he can climb up and down. And do what, do whatever he wants up there. And it'll be perfectly fine. And uh, then we also have a shallow water bowl. I don't really keep a very deep water bowl for most of my uh for a lot of my reptiles especially in his case uh they can swim but they're they're not very active swimmers you know so this is the basis of how we're setting him up uh, as you can see here we've got foliage for him He's got, the one reason I like this hide is there's a nice little spot he can come up here because, uh, like I said in my previous video, they do have a basking spot. They're one of the reptiles that need that. So this right here, this little platform offers him a nice little spot where he can just come up here, bask, enjoy himself. And then we've got his sticks set up. So this also doubles as a hide, so it's nice. He's got one over there and one over here, so he has one on the hot side and one on the cold side. That's what you want, so... Granted, in a tank this small, the temperature change isn't going to be dramatic. I mean, we're seriously talking maybe a two or three degree change in a tank this small. I usually try and keep him right around the 80 degree mark, personally. And, I mean, that's pretty much it, folks. I said nothing super crazy with setup when it comes to these guys. Very simple snakes, easy to care for. You don't have to use the exact substrate I do. This is just what I personally found works best. I actually use a similar mixture to this for my leopard geckos. That works really great. I mean, we could do a video on them, how I set their tank up start to finish. I know this one's kind of rushed and sloppy, but it's just such a simple setup. I don't. I don't see a need to drag it out. It's just cocoa hus, soak it, get it a little moist, add your sand, and then make sure you've got two hides, shallow water bowl, and a little bit of foliage for them to climb around in and explore, and a basking light. That's all you really need for these guys. Their care really is about as simple as it comes. So with that, I guess we will grab Clyde, set him in his tank, and see how he likes it.
Come here, little guy. So again, this is Clyde, my MBK. And we're just gonna add him in here, see how he feels. You can see that? He's already found him a nice little spot, plenty of room to climb, plenty of room to hide. Sorry about that. But uh, that's, that's really all there is for their setup. I mean, if you don't want to do the hide thing with the moths, that's fine. It is recommended, though, especially if you don't, you're don't, not the best at keeping control of humidity in a full aquarium, which is a pretty common issue. Uh, if you don't want to do it that way, you can also just get yourself like a sandwich container, cut a large enough hole in there to make sure your snake can move in and out. And again, you can use wet paper towels or, again, I like the stagnant moss. And these things are cheap. I mean, I think I paid 11 bucks for the bag of sand. And then at my local pet store, I paid $7 for a block of cuckoo husk. And I didn't even use half the block for his setup. A full block would probably be more like when he's an adult and we move him up into a much larger setup. Because we do have a 40-gallon front opening that he will be moved into as he ages and grows. But again... He's a baby. He doesn't need a huge enclosure at the moment. I mean, granted, I could if I wanted to. But as he's still young, I'm trying to just keep a better eye on him and watch him as he develops. And we will adjust him as he grows with size. And with that, uh, yeah, that'll be that on this video. And like I said, if you guys want to see how I do my leopard geckos, go ahead, you know, leave a comment, say yes or no. And again, I do apologize for rushing through this video. It, it's just, it's really simple. I, I don't want to extend it way beyond what it needs to be. And with that, have a wonderful evening. Merry Christmas.